Thank you everybody for watching the Matt Black Show. It's a little different edition today, basically. What we're going to be doing is, uh, it's my birthday. So, uh, since I've always interviewed everybody else, I decided to uh, get a good friend of mine to interview me. And then I'm going to do a tag set with a uh, really badass DJ. We'll get into that here in a second, and I uh, hope you enjoy. So, uh, just whatever happens, just be, uh, be advised. It might not be suitable for uh, children. So, enjoy. <laughs> All you, Brian. Thanks for having me, Matt. I've had so much fun with your show. This is, what, my fourth time back? <laughs> and it's a blast every time, man. Um, I just uh, want to interview you this time. So, this is <laughs> <laughs> tell everybody where you're from and how you got into this thing. So, basically, the questions I asked everybody else, I just handed yeah. it off to him. and So, I guess it's my taste of uh, the guest Little bubble. Little get-backs, as, as we like to call them. <laughs> <laughs> so be well, ready uh, buddy be ready we're, we're starting off easy <laughs> tell everybody where you're from to make it not confusing <laughs> i guess i'll just say uh from atlanta you know and um pretty much uh traveled pretty much all around the world and stuff and enjoyed myself just a little skateboarder and uh got into some tables listened to some uh dmx way back in the day and i was just like man that really really had me going so you know what so it was kind of a hip hop thing that got you started. Yeah, more of a hip hop thing, you know, skater, punk, hip hop, try to be cool little shit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Weren't we all? <laughs> Cuz nah. when I met you, when I met you, mm. you were living with uh Rob Silver. Yeah, Silver. That that crazy guy. And um you were playing a oh, lot no. of uh <laughs> like you were doing drum and bass, but you had a bunch of trance and house vinyl. As yeah. Well, like that you said you used to play. How'd you uh how'd you make the transfer from hip hop to house to drum and bass? Huh. Well, I guess it was more of a uh you know, the Somber Reptile. That was a place I used to go oh, to. Oh man, I love that place. And I heard drum and bass and it was always like, you know, go sit in the back of the bus, you know. So I figure it was like, hey. And then the energy you got off it was just so crazy and you can change it up so much and it's just like something I wanted to listen to. You know, trance is great. Producing trance I think is amazing. You know, it's really good stuff. But drum and bass, just the energy is so good. I just couldn't get enough of it and that's what I like to spin. I, I can dare, definitely uh, agree with you there. Drum and bass is, <laughs> is a lot of fun. Trance is fun to produce, but drum and bass is just fun to spin, isn't it? Oh, hell yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Even throw some breaks in there. Um, yeah, what, what are you going to be doing tonight, speaking of genres and styles and junk? <laughs> Shit, I don't know. I guess we're just going to throw in some crazy fucking sick, nasty, dark drum and bass. And uh, Well, let, let me go ahead and give the mic to uh, that DJ and uh, let him tell a little bit about himself and uh, what he's going to be playing. Because I actually just met him the other day. So here you go. <laughs> What's up? Thank you very much for having me on. Big yeah. the Max. Welcome to the alien planet. BT. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So, yeah. Bobby. I uh, go by aneurysm <laughs> as a DJ. I'm like Matt here. I spend like dark, take it, um, tech step, um, oriented drum and bass. You know, the darker the better. Like you said, the energy just keeps me going and shit. So. Yeah, I heard you uh, warming up a little earlier. I heard some, some step of sorts in there. Well, yeah, every now and then I thought to throw a little halftime stuff because, you know, you, they call it drum still, but it's just halftime drum and bass as far as I'm concerned. Awesome. I'm glad to hear you say stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 uh, how long have you been playing? Um, uh, about a year and a half now. Really? And um, you're on a controller tonight. Um, yeah. is, is that primarily what you do? Um, I, have, I, have, I don't have my own set of CDJs. I've played on Friends and whatnot, so I have a little bit of practice on them. And I have been, I have a set of vinyl turntables at the house with no mixer. But I've what what, a what bit. kind of tables you got? Uh, New Mark uh, TTX was TTX. That's good. Yeah, the, those are no joke. Those hold their own. Yeah, man. <laughs> I got I got to get the motor fixed on one of them, but you made uh, my heart flutter saying you had <laughs> turntables at the house. Oh yeah, man. I, I mean, I try to do it full spectrum. All right, good, good. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it looks like you guys are going to be tagging tonight. Is that what's going on? Yeah, a little back and forth. You know, um, he found me on Facebook. Like, yo, we got the same tracks. And make a good mashup for my birthday. Figure he won't have to primarily provide all the music all night, so he can have a little fun. <laughs> awesome. Well, that was the whole point, you know. I figure it's my birthday. I like to go crazy with it. Tractor. The reason I love that thing so much, it's just 
so many options you have, so many different ways to do things. And once you get, if you find a good four beat that you like, then you can, you can basically, you can record that, play another four beat on top of it, record that, make your own track. Then you can play two tracks on top of that. Then you got C and D. You can play two more on that with your recording and just effects. It's so layer after layer, basically. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a fucking orgy stack. It's great. <laughs> <you know? laughs> An orgy of music. I love it. That's good stuff. <laughs> Um, Matt, who, um, if, I, I'm going to word it a little differently than you have it on your list here. Yeah, those questions might have been for the uh, girl DJ before. Yeah, so. uh, I'm, I'm not going to ask you <laughs> if it's harder to get a gig as a girl DJ. We'll skip that one. Um, but one I do like, and I was going to kind of ask you this, and uh, I was thinking about it earlier. Um, if you could open for any DJ, who would it be? Wow, Okay. It's very interesting getting asked a these little, little twist. I like you know, on here it's like, what? Who are your mentor DJs? And that could be a list of it's like mile long. But like, if there was one DJ that you could open for right now. I just got to do mine, which was Stoneface and Terminal, and I got to thank Phil Ferguson from Underground Syndicate for that. That was awesome. But who would you want to open for? I could think right away who I'd want to tag for. Maybe um, definitely Bad Boy Bill. I'd love to tag a Bad Boy Bill. That's, That's an awesome choice. Um, but uh, <laughs> but open up for I would say like. Uh, I don't know. Open up for really jolly. Uh, I don't know. Something simple, more like um, old school funness, like Rabbit in the Moon or something. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm 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 in the same boat with you. I'd like to open for like some some John Digweed now or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I could see you opening like like right now with your drum and bass style. I could see you opening for like some high contrast or some AK or something like that. Definitely, definitely. You know? It's just you know Atlanta scene nowadays. It's it's not as much drum and bass as it used to be. That's definitely true. It's it's definitely yeah. a dub now. So I guess I, I guess I focus my mind and is who would I open up for like here? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> here in Mars, all these fucking little creatures around this son of a bitch. <laughs> um, now your DJ name. Yeah, it's kind of changed a little bit over the years. I remember when 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 you were deciding like what to stick with back again when you were living with Rob. That's really confusing. Isn't it? Yeah. It's yeah. Kind of, I, kind of I like mean, my career. It's very confusing. My suggestion was always <laughs> Nye DJ because it had a little awkward twist to it. Uh-huh. Like stand out. But I don't know. What, how, how, did you, how did you come up with all that? Well, Nye was um, uh, basically what it was is I, I stayed in Jersey a long time and I went to New York, stayed there for a little bit, and I came back. And uh, NYTO was New York and ghetto at the end. So I was like, because I had a little <laughs> lowrider bike with a little TV on it, you know, and. 144 spoke Dayton's and velvet seat and shit. And, so it's like New York version of ghetto. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like it's a, it's you know, it's an off brand, I guess you would say. So. <laughs> I like that. But uh, yeah, so that's what that mean, Nido. And then I tried Nye. Somebody said that, you know, and I was like, well, party all the time, New Year's Eve, you know, why? Yeah, every day. But now it's what? What'd you say last week, Doctor Black? Doctor Black. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think you should stick with Doctor Black. Why not? Mike Katz did the same thing over at Halo. You know, he's Dr. Katz. I like that. Yeah. It's very uh, directive, you know, doctor. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. It's like a, a sense of accomplishment without really doing a thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, do, you, do you have any, like, uh, pregame rituals you like to do before you get ready to play? Um, <laughs> you know, like, um, what's, your, what's your style of readiness? <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic there. Okay. Let's see here. Usually, uh, before I get going, I like to um, pray to little people. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> <laughs> pray, pray to pray to little people. <laughs> like, like, do you bow down to midgets? <laughs> just really short children, or <laughs> no? I'm just messing with you. Um, that would be really cool, though. If I had a little midget that I could keep around me, if this show gets big enough and I could have a little guy, you know, sponsor the Matt Black Show, hey, why not, man? He'd be awesome, dude. I would definitely pray to him every night, probably. <laughs> oh, yes. No, but nothing really, no. I'm not really religious or anything. Okay. Spiritual, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's, let, let's all remember, this is Matt's birthday celebration. <laughs> it was yesterday, right? Yeah, it was uh, May 6th, yeah. Yeah, how old are you now? 29. 29, you're growing up so fast. Damn it. Damn it. One more before I hit 30. <laughs> what a bitch. Seems like just two days ago <laughs> you were 28. <laughs> That's why we're on Mars right now, just because, you know, 
If, after you go so many places, you're like, what the hell have I not gone to yet? Mars, hell, why not, you know? <laughs> We've got some alien juice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you got to get down low to get it, too. It's really awkward. <laughs> It is a little unusual. It's like in a little crater on this planet. We found it, and we just started drinking it. It's pretty awesome. It's it's so good. We'll try and bring some back for everybody, but I don't know. I might have to drink it all. Um, this is a weird question, but I'm going to ask it to you. What's in there? If you were to play a live set and you had to bring a first aid kit, what would you bring? <laughs> Why is that even on the list? I don't know, but I want I, I really want to know what's in Matt Black's first aid kit. <laughs> Brian Tedder, so do I. <laughs> uh, hell, I guess. Uh... <laughs> see how hard this is? <laughs> you see, these, th- this is when we start getting you back. <laughs> yeah, I could do that if I had to do something simple ostrich jerky. That stuff's good. In a first aid kit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Lost his jerky. You, you've uh, cut yourself deeply. What do you do? Rub first? A tiki the torch. Ostrich jerky on it? <laughs> <laughs> and after a tiki torch, I would do uh, <laughs> hand wipes. And uh, I don't know. Just a backup hard drive, I guess, yeah. <laughs> All right. See, I, I I like how you took it to like DJ first aid instead of actual first aid. Yeah. So yeah. that's good. Like, um, I, I've I've known bands that um, instead of calling for a roadie when they bust a string or have a short in their pedal or whatever, they they shout medic, and their roadie comes running off the side of the stage. So it's kind of the same thing there. Anybody want to do that for me? They're welcome to. I mean, that sounds very uh, convenient. Yeah, medic. Yeah, roadie comes running out, saves the day. Yeah. I wouldn't have to call them a medic. I could be up to them. I'd call them anything they want. Um, Jim Bob. <laughs> yeah. To you, <laughs> <laughs> Matt Black. <laughs> what do you think it means to be a DJ? To please the ecstasy of the soul that you are playing for no matter how it needs to be done with music. Now, how long did it take you to come up with that answer? Because I know this question has been on your list for a long time, and you've asked probably 15 DJs this question. No, that was actually really random. Really? Yeah. Really, that was off the cuff. Yeah, dead yeah. serious, yeah. I like it. That's why people ask me, they're like, when you play a track or what, you know, what the hell did you just play? I was like, really, I had no idea what I just played. Mm-hmm. I don't even know the name of it. Okay. A lot of people hate me for that, but, you know. I don't hate you for it. I know. <laughs> I can still spin, at least. You know. <laughs> um, <clears throat> no, there's been a lot of talk of um, drum step, yeah. step, step music, awesome. halftime. <laughs> yeah. what, what do you think of um, how dubstep has, has come into the Atlanta scene? What do you, what's your take on the entire dubstep revolution that's been going on? I'm actually feeling it now. I actually give some props out to it. I don't like how it's turned everything kind of like pop, you know. I mean, if you think of dubstep, you think of every high school kid that knows a remix of it, you know. And that's not what it used to be. It was different. It was like, you know, it wasn't as pop before. But still, there's some good-ass dubstep out there that you can find. I do have mad respect for it, you know. But uh, that's pretty much my take on it. I have a lot of it, so... I don't spend it that much. I spend it on a uh, show I had with uh, Poncho Grady here, and I went and p- picked him up. Shout out to Poncho Grady. And uh, we came here, and I had a hard drive, but he didn't have his. We drove like two hours away. We finally got back, and he said, oh, shit, I forgot my hard drive. I said, well, shit, how are you going to play, play a set? And he goes, ah, oh, we got it. So we just used mine and back and forth. It was pretty good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was very entertaining, actually. That's, that's an interesting story. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. Anything you're playing out? Are you playing out anytime soon? Ah, uh, the show's got me so uh, booked. You know, it, it, it's tough. That and uh, DJing. You know, at the uh, entertainment bars. Yeah, you, <laughs> you definitely stay busy in the entertainment industry. <laughs> um. Well, we'll 
We'll try and get you on the next Digital Horizons lineup. Yeah. Get you back out. I I really enjoyed your set at the last uh, full on Fridays at Scene City. That was that was pretty cool. Yeah, did, I appreciate did, 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 did you come out for that? Was that? No, I don't know if I came to DJ yeah, that. Did yeah, I? you did you that. Mm-hmm. You feel like you. I feel like, <laughs> you feel, feel like, like it. I feel like that might be the answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you feel like it, then I want to believe you. <laughs> That's awesome. Did the soundboard cut off on you? <laughs> it, 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 it might have. Oh, yeah, well. But that's okay. Uh. <laughs> um, Just remember, everybody out there, if you want to see all the other videos, this one's, this one's kind of like more of a blooper crazy thing on Mars, you know? We're just going to sip Mars juice and get crazy, play a cool-ass two-hour set of some dark, good drum and bass. and uh, So I hope you enjoy it. But just go to YouTube, search The Matt Black Show, but no <laughs> channels, I mean, um, no spaces in between when you search for the channel. And there you go. Uh, we, we still got crazy questions to ask you, man. Oh, we do. What time is it? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we got like it, it's it's nine fifty six. Oh, nine fifty six. So we still got a yeah, few minutes yeah, left. We got ten minutes. So I I just can't get the mouse down over here to read this part. No, two two fingers. You got a two finger. She likes two fingers. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, now it's over here. All right, that's that's what, weird. That no, two good. fingers to scroll. Like yeah. That. Well, it was stuck up here for a minute. Anyway, so anyway. <laughs> There's too many monitors in here. This this setup is is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna ask you this crazy question because <laughs> you you tried to to stump me with this thing twice already, I think. Okay. And I it's wish I could it's sit just out, somehow. This is you, you know. Oh shit! Look at that. I've I've been stuck in Speakers that chair. Speakers are made too. for a tall man. No, no, they're not. <laughs> no, they're not. Um. Now, <laughs> do you think there's um, there's any specific things that, that DJs get heckled for? Yeah. Yeah, like what? Their clothes. Their clothes? <laughs> like Angry Bird t-shirts? <laughs> I don't think everybody should have to wear like a, you know... I guess, what do you, what do you call that? You know, like a flat-billed hat and get it all like with flat it, out. With it... Curved up in the in the bill. Yeah. yeah, I think that you should d- judge a DJ more by. Um, look, I think that DJs get heckled for sometimes their appearance <laughs> than more of their sound and their talent. I can agree with that. Yeah, yeah. I I I, I definitely saw that when when Paul Oakenfold started growing his hair out and doing the shaggy thing. Yeah, didn't he look silly? Yeah, <laughs> but man, he was still he was still ripping it. But <laughs> man, he looked like a silly Brit. Oh, there's a lot of people out there that heckle it. You know, they're just kind of like. Yeah. Judge that shit. Yeah, yeah. You know, don't judge me for my tiny blue hat. <laughs> <laughs> it fits you nice. What? Uh, it fits you very nice. Thank by you. The way, yeah. Thank you. I like that. Thank you. <laughs> it was gifted. You know, a friend gave it to me. <laughs> okay, so this three-part question is really what I wanted oh, to get to. You knew this was coming, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's yours, so you had to know it was coming. <laughs> All right. I didn't really look at it though. I kind of gave you an old question set it's 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 strange but we're gonna do it i'm gonna do it line by line here um so it's a three-part question the first part is what is your dream equipment well really tell you the truth probably uh what i saw the other day um on what was it facebook somebody sent it to me the new techniques what is it like the 30th anniversary the 30th anniversary yeah Yeah, dude i posted that to my page that thing that was was, those are awesome four I found something out about those, if I can interject right quick. Uh, yeah, well, Th- Those aren't actually released by Techniques. Well, yeah, because they went They're obsolete. refurbs by Next Sound. A company yeah. in Brazil is still making Techniques turntables with Techniques specs. Oh, so Next Sound Brazil, this is a shout-out to you guys. Y'all do awesome work. Those are custom turntables that look gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, those are. So that would be yeah. my dream equipment. If they come out with those, I would do that. And uh, I don't know, really, to tell you the truth, probably a... Uh, a really nice uh what the uh pioneer pioneer mixer you know which one there, i mean <laughs> you could have the 7 <laughs> 700 the 800 the 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 1000 the 3000 the uh, i don't know Probably the 1000 the 8 you like the 800 800 nice too and yeah it, it's pretty standard though i like that <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no, no, no I, I can stick with the 800 yeah let's go for it 
All right, the, the 800 school. Tiny hat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just, Polka sorry. dot hat. I got you. <laughs> Second part of the question. Um, Combine two of these four parties. Okay. So any two out of these four. A, a naked party but on top of a mountain. So frigid titties. <laughs> <laughs> B, a field rave DJ battle with a grand prize of only $40. C, <laughs> a party on the set of Family Guy, which means somehow you're a cartoon, but everyone would have to bring an exotic pet. D, <laughs> a crazy eight-foot foam party in the middle of Amsterdam, and the theme of this party would be bondage. <laughs> so any two of those four. Do you need me to recap? Uh, let's go with um, A. So A is a, a naked party, but on top of a mountain, so frigid titties. And... Uh... Let's put a mountain slap dab in the middle of Amsterdam. So so a crazy eight-foot foam naked bondage party in Amsterdam on top of a mountain. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, good. <laughs> Read the next. <laughs> the third part of the question is... As you are DJing this crazy party, <laughs> what would be three untamed risky things you would wish to see before the end of your two-hour set? Yes. Okay. Risque. We got bondage. We got a mountain. We got a two-hour set. <laughs> <laughs> we got an orgy of paper over here. <laughs> 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 I'd probably do um I don't know. So so basically we got those we got those things going on. It's in Amsterdam. We have foam, right? <coughs> Am I yeah, missing? of course we do. Are we, are we missing anything here? <laughs> but the bad thing is, okay, I want to do, you know, eight foot I want to see naked I want to see naked mountain. bonded spanking, but I'm afraid because if it's foam then Will you know, the foam freeze. That fo well, the foam get real nasty. If everybody has their clothes off, but I guess that, you know, why not? Because that's eight foot. I mean, I mean you're crawling in it. It's going to get in your eyes and your... Oh, it got nasty at Bubblicious and people had their clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. I had, okay. to, I had to mention it. The second thing would be... <laughs> Everybody lost something at Bubblicious. <laughs> <laughs> Since it's on top of a mountain... When was Bubblicious? <laughs> Bubblicious, if, if for anyone who doesn't know, was the festival that my company, Digital Horizons, and Phil Ferguson's company, Underground Syndicate, threw together. Last summer, it was a three-day festival with massive piles of dirty-ass foam. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what I'm afraid about. You know, huge, the bondage is crazy. Huge mountains of foam. <laughs> so if you're talking about, you know, people being naked in it, on top of a mountain, it's probably going to be some dirty-ass foam, yeah. It'd be fun. I'd like to see these people getting spanked somehow in eight-foot foam. If bondage. It's possible. In bondage. Like that, yeah. yeah. So a bonded <laughs> swing, it'd be another thing to see. I want to see a bonded swing on a tree, people swinging and enjoying themselves, you know. And then uh, probably the third thing I would like to see is, uh, let's see, am I missing anything here? We got foam. We got that. And then uh, one other thing I'm probably missing. It's on top of a mountain, right? It is on top of a mountain, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, these titties are frigid. <laughs> well, for some reason, we, we would find a, a, a log cabin up there, and we would just have to uh, nipples pack it to out. cut glass. Yeah, yeah. We just have to we just have to pack out the cabin, you know, and just destroy it. So when somebody gets there, they'd just be like, "What the hell happened to this place?" There's like, <laughs> "What the hell?" <laughs> <laughs> Leave your mark, you know. What is going on here? Throw a fantasy party. <laughs> Leave your mark. Uh, <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Um, we're, we're almost out of time, but I'm going to squeak one more in here because I don't I care. I like that. Okay. <laughs> um, I handed it off to you for this show. <laughs> Everybody beware. <laughs> what would get you so excited that you would have to rip your clothes off and keep DJing? 
So apparently you're DJing. Something happens, makes you so excited you rip your clothes off, but you don't stop DJing. <laughs> yeah, I always thought about this one every time I said it. <laughs> And I, somehow I always got everybody to answer it, and I don't know how the hell to answer it. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard so many great answers. They've all probably been taken. Yeah. <laughs> yeah after a year. How many weeks are in a year? <laughs> 52? 50, 52, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's about, yeah, close Man, to 52. Man, I have yeah. not drank enough, obviously, of this alien <laughs> planet <laughs> juice stuff, because I can still tell you answers like that. <laughs> I can, I can still do head math, so that's that's not good. I don't know. I guess I guess what I would do it would have to be uh, more of like I don't know. I don't know. It would have to be like a really really messed up scenario. I mean, I would have to be like a seventy year old DJ still. Wait. In a midlife crisis, still waddling. <laughs> Hang on, I want to stop you right there. My my my, you know. If a partner I'm with at the time would have to be dead, and then I would have to, uh, you know, just be in that state of mind that I just have to freak out so bad, and then, like, a bunch of girls have to take their clothes off, and then I would probably take mine off, too. Oh, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> if you're 70 years old and DJing and ripping your clothes off, I hope I'm nowhere near this party. <laughs> I'll do this. I mean, seriously, 70 years old, you're going to rip your clothes off? Keep DJing. Why not? You know, at that point, sure. you really yeah. won't care because you'll probably die in a couple Why not? Days. You're senile at this yeah. point. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there are 60 year old senile well, see, people. You got to think about it. I had to come up with an answer that nobody has said yet, you know? <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, well, thank you for letting me interview you, Matt. I appreciate that. It's probably time to start the DJ set. <laughs> All right. It's a celebration for your birthday, man. Happy birthday. I appreciate you interviewing me, man. And Thank uh, you so much for having me come interview you. This was a blab 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 Black, 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 black,